Chapter 1, entitled The Science of Information, is a very high-level introduction to information theory. Information theory was founded by Bell Telephone Laboratory scientist Claude Shannon with the seminal paper The Mathematical Theory of Communication in 1948. Information theory studies fundamental limits in communications in the form of transmission, storage, etc. This figure, taken from Shannon's 1948 paper, shows a basic communication system. On the left is an information source that generates a message to be transmitted. The transmitter processes the message into a signal and transmits it through a channel. The received signal may not be exactly the same as the transmitted signal because it may be contaminated by a noise source. The receiver, based on the received signal, decodes the message and delivers it to the destination. Here are some pictures of Shannon at different ages. There are two key concepts in information theory. First, information is uncertainty and so, an information source is modeled as a random variable. This is rather counterintuitive to start with. To illustrate the idea, consider the test pattern that is transmitted on a TV channel after the program for the day is finished. In the analog era, the same pattern is transmitted over and over again. From the transmission point of view, this is completely redundant because the TV set can simply store the pattern in a memory and then no more transmission is necessary. The point here is that there must be uncertainty associated with the information source, otherwise it does not need to be transmitted at all. So, naturally, an information source is modeled by a random variable. Another key concept in information theory is that information is digital. That is, information transmission is equivalent to transmitting zeros and ones without making reference to what these bits represent. Nowadays, almost all information transmissions are in digital form. But the theoretical foundation was already built in Shannon's fundamental work more than 60 years ago. In Shannon's seminal paper, there are two fundamental theorems. The first theorem is the source coding theorem that establishes the fundamental limit in data compression. Nowadays, there are many forms of data compression. For example, we use zip for general file compression, in particular for text files. Audio files can be compressed in the MP3 format. Image files can be compressed in the JPEG format. And video files can be compressed in the MPEG format. The idea of the source coding theorem is that no matter how smart the data compression algorithm is designed, there is always a minimum size that the file can be compressed. And this is what it means by a fundamental limit. The second fundamental limit is the channel coding theorem. This theorem establishes the fundamental limit for reliable communication through a noisy channel. The idea is that no matter how smart the communication is designed, for reliable communication, there exists a maximum rate that information can be transmitted through the channel. This quantity is called the channel capacity. Scenarios of communicating through a noisy channel include using the plain old telephone for voice communication, using the cellular phone for voice, data, and video communication, using the modem for computer communication, and using a memory device such as hard disk, DVD, or fresh memory for data storage. 
At first sight, data storage does not appear to be a form of communication. But in fact, when we store information on a hard disk and retrieve the information sometime later, we are using the hard disk to communicate the information from the present to the future. As reading assignment, you should take time to read through chapter 1. If you have access to Wikipedia, I also highly recommend the following two web pages. The first web page contains a largely non-technical introduction to information theory. And the second web page contains the biography and contributions of Claude Shannon, a legendary scientist of the last century. Information theory, together with the transistor and optical fiber, has laid the foundation for the information age and has dramatically changed the daily life of every one of us.